when it comes to iPhones and other mobile devices, battery is really important. Battery life that you get during the day and also the battery health. How fast the battery health will drop on a device will determine a lot of things. For example, on iOS devices, once this drops below 80%, your device won't actually perform the same. You will need to service the battery in order to have your device running as it should. Now, with the new devices, I'm talking here about the iPhone 14 series. We have had this problem and I have seen a lot of reports by users for the battery health actually dropping really, really fast. So what is happening here? You can see mine is at 92% right now this device was bought at the end of september and it actually has dropped quite fast but we have other reports here which are really interesting so you can see right here 94 percent it dropped two percent in one week and here we have 91 percent on the iphone 14 pro but what's really interesting is this next tweet right here 91 percent 13 Pro, almost two years bad battery for the iPhone 14 Pro models this year. So basically these two users have both the same battery health, but again, the devices are different. They're a year apart from each other. The iPhone 14 Pro here, 10 months old, one year and 10 months here on the iPhone 13 Pro, and they have the exact same battery health percentage. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening here. And of course, towards the end of the video, I will show you guys a few tips and tricks that can help you prevent the battery health from dropping really, really fast. Of course, you cannot do anything to stop it. You can just prevent it to actually drop really fast. So first of all, to understand what's happening here, we need to understand how batteries work. So on your device, I will leave a link right down below in the description of the video to a shortcut which you can install on your device and then head on right here to privacy and security under settings scroll all the way down analytics and improvements go to analytics data and right here we'll have analytics go to the one before the last one right here tap the share button and run the shortcut that you will install so it's battery stats and right here it will show the real statistics for your battery so let's go ahead and wait this here a few seconds and it should show the information about our device and you can see right here what's happening so the current capacity is actually 87 percent now this is when you count the real milliamp hours on the battery now you can see right there the battery had 4526 milliamp hours once, of course, it was new. But the iPhone 14 Pro Max actually doesn't have that many milliamp hours. It actually has officially 4,323. So this one had about 200 milliamp hours more than it should have. Now, this is what happens with batteries. No battery will be the same. This one had a bit more. Last time when I bought the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it had like 600 more. So that's why it would stay at 100% battery health for a really, really long time. Because the battery health on your settings app will actually start to drop once the million powers drop below the official number that Apple gives. So for these 200 that are extra, it won't show any drop at all. Once it starts dropping below the official number, that's when it shows that it's dropping on the battery health section. So you can see right here, and we have the cycles 285. According to Apple, to go to 80%, which is basically the limit where your device will basically need a service, you need to go through 500 battery cycles. You can see the true battery health here is at 87% with 285 battery charging cycles. So that's actually quite bad. And I believe this is what happening this year. The batteries on the iPhone 14 series have actually the million power set just a few million powers above the official number that Apple gave. That's why we're seeing a very fast drop on the battery health. But of course, there are things that you can do to prevent the battery health from dropping really, really fast. Let me show you guys some of those. Now, just another quick tip before we get into all that. I've seen a lot of reports by different users that say that updating their device dropped the battery health by 1%, 2 or maybe even 3%. Well, that will actually happen, but it's not the fault of the update. 
The problem there is that iOS won't actually update the battery health percentage here until you update your device. So mine is it's currently at 92%. So if I leave this up this device without any updates, let's say for like two months, and of course use it during that time, once I update it, it will probably show like 88 or maybe 89, because by the time the update comes to the device and the device is updating, iOS will recheck all of its components and will show you the real battery health. So what can you do to actually prevent the battery health from dropping really, really fast on your device? Now, one thing you should always have enabled is optimized battery charging. I cannot stress this enough, always make sure that you have this enabled. A lot of people probably are seeing their device not charging over 80% during the day, that of course might be a problem, but if you just want to charge your device completely, come here, turn this off, and you will get this option to turn it off until tomorrow. So you do that, your device charges over 80%, but you don't have to worry about the feature because it will be re-enabled automatically tomorrow. So make sure you always have this enabled. This will have a huge impact when it comes to battery health on your iPhone. Now there are a few things that people do on their iPhones which basically will have an impact on the battery life. So if you if you just drain down the battery of your iPhone really fast, you will have to recharge it and every 100% that it drains down and it charges, of course, that that is a cycle that will have an impact on battery health. So try to do less stuff with your iPhone. Let's say for example, airplane to to your TV. Airplane is not really that necessary. Most I most actually TVs will have maybe a browser or a built-in YouTube app or whatever you're watching, Netflix, whatever you're watching, you don't have to actually airplay from your iPhone. That will just consume battery, a lot of battery on the iPhone, and will have a contribution on the battery cycles, which is again really bad for the battery health of your iPhone. Another thing I wouldn't do. If you have a choice, let's say you have a computer or an iPad editing videos. If you have like an app that you use to edit video on your iPhone, you have another option, make sure you use those and not your iPhone. Video editing apps and of course renderings are real, real hard on the iPhone. They will heat up the phone, heat up the battery, consume a ton of battery. Again, having a big, contribu a big contribution on the battery cycles. And another thing is like, heavy graphic games. So playing like really like, let's say maybe Call of Duty or something like that on your iPhone will actually have a huge impact. The graphics there are amazing, but of course they require a lot of work from your iPhone. That way draining down the battery again, having a huge impact on the battery cycles of your iPhone. Another big thing when it comes to the iPhone's battery that will help the battery get damaged really, really fast is heat. Heat is one of the like biggest enemies of lithium ion batteries. So what you can do about it, of course, prevent using your iPhone or just storing it on places where it's really, really hot. Using it while charging, of course, there's not a big problem with that if you're using just for, for like light stuff. But if you're using like a fast charger and still using your iPhone, maybe doing some stuff like playing a game or something like that, that will heat up the iPhone really, really bad. It will have an impact on the battery. This is also confirmed by Apple. You should avoid the heat on your iPhone by any means because it has a really bad impact on the battery health. Another thing will be chargers. Make sure you always use genuine chargers and also the cases. If you use like bulky cases while charging your iPhone, while using it, it will get really, really hot. So if you want to use a case, make sure you use a thinner one because some of the really bulky cases, they will heat up the iPhone and from the case, you will probably not even like notice it. So that way your iPhone will stay hot for a long time damaging the battery. Another thing that will heat up the phone and I wouldn't recommend is wireless charging. Don't use wireless charging every day on your iPhone. That is also a huge no-no. It will have a really bad impact on the battery. And now let's talk about the low power mode. Now a lot of people don't actually ever use low power mode. Now I would suggest that you use low power mode when you know you're not doing something really like heavy duty on your iPhone, just like browsing things. And you know, maybe you're not close to a charger, even though your, your battery might be at maybe like 70 or 60%, use low power mode. It will have a 
great impact on preserving battery life. That way, of course, your device will go through as less cycles as possible. That is the way, of course, to prevent the battery health from dropping really, really fast. Now that we're done with some of the most important stuff, let me show you guys a few other tricks that actually work that can help you preserve battery life on your device. That way your device will go through as less charging cycles as possible, having always a great battery health. First of all is apps. Now on my channel, I do a few, a few times a month, I will do videos on apps and every time I will probably download like maybe 10 or 12 apps and those a lot of times I forget to delete them, they will stay on the device, but they will do a lot of damage to the device. That will take, they will take up space of course, but also iOS, Siri will start learning from those apps, will start like showing suggestions from those apps, that way it consumes actually a lot of battery, having a very very bad impact on the iPhone's battery life. Next up is 5G, now 5G will just drain the battery out of your iPhone. Even the LTE or 4G, whatever you want to call it, if you have an option to use a Wi-Fi network, go ahead and use the Wi-Fi network. Always prefer using Wi-Fi instead of 5G or 4G because they consume a ton of battery on your device. So make sure if you're on a place where you know that the 5G coverage is not that good, you don't actually need it, move to LTE or 4G. And of course, if you have the option to use Wi-Fi, always choose Wi-Fi before LTE or 5G. Notifications are also very, very bad for your device. If you have a ton of notifications, your device's battery will drain really fast. Now going into notifications, you will have of course a long list of the apps that you have on your device. Having notifications turned on for all of these apps will just like consume the battery of your iPhone really, really fast. Having the screen of your device light up every time you get a new notification, there is a sound, there is a vibration, and the screen brightens, they all consume battery, again, having a big contribution on your iPhone having to charge more often, that way of course going through more batteries charging cycles, and decreasing the battery health of your device. Also, make sure that you configure Siri the right way, like the hey, listen for the hey word and of course now the new just say siri and siri when locked and when unlocked and all that stuff make sure you go ahead and just use siri whenever you need it and if you don't actually use it turn it off completely another thing you can do is of course the old school background app refresh so general background app refresh and make sure you have most apps here turned off you probably don't need most of them having to just refresh on the background most of them will be like apps that you probably don't even use that often so make sure you go ahead and turn off as much as possible here always of course make sure that you have auto lock enabled display and brightness auto lock enabled right here and also auto brightness this is really really important i see a lot of people use the brightness of they are on their device on the manual mode that will actually just drain the battery out of your iphone most people like will just turn off the brightness when they go outside they get inside they forget to turn it down that of course is a huge impact on the battery's life so again go ahead and go under accessibility display and text size always make sure you have auto brightness turned on and last but not least when it comes to batteries always make sure that you have your device updated always have the latest iOS software update on your device. And if I'd be you, if you're using a, just a device as a daily driver, I would actually avoid betas on the device. I wouldn't install a beta software on the device at all. So just go ahead and update the official versions of iOS. Always make sure that you have the latest one. You can just enable the automatic updates from here. Of course, iOS updates and security responses. Make sure you have all of those turned on and you're good to go. So that is it for this video guys. I hope this video will help a lot of you guys experiencing fast battery health drops on the iPhone 14 series. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you on the next one.